So the first notebook problem is going to be uh, seeing this satellite code. Um, you'll see now um, something that you'll get used to is that this number sign or hash character um, indicates the start of a comment, and anything after that is ignored. Uh, comments don't need to be any, in any format or code. They're there to help you or someone else make sense of your code and what it's doing. Um, so sometimes you can even uh, say you want to program a few things. You can make a comment, I want to do this, and then I want to do this, and then I want to do this, and it'll help you while you're coding. Once you've done coding, uh, once you're done, if you want to explain what you've done, um, if it's a little complicated, you can put that in a comment. And that's generally good. You don't want every other line to be a comment. But if you do something that um, might not make sense when you look at it a week from now, it's a good idea to make a comment. Um, objects. Uh, objects, in the sense of Python, are the things that Python programs work with. Um, so with this, uh, x is an object, 5 is an object, y is an object, 10 is an object, z is an object, x is an object, 5 is still an object, hello is an object, hello world is an object, all of these things are objects. Pardon? So we'll learn later about something called object-oriented programming. And um, that is using objects in a more elaborate fashion where you very conceptually, um, for example, I could create a car object which can drive. I can create a truck object which can also drive. So I can create a thing that drives object which of course can drive. Um, so later we'll learn about using objects in a very advanced way, and Python allows you to do that. But for now, just know that kind of anything that Python programs work with is, is an object. There are a couple things in these lines of code which aren't objects. There's two characters which aren't objects. Can anyone guess, Nayeli? Yeah, the equal or the equation and then the multiplication. I guess if you wanted, yeah, so those are not objects. Those are uh, things called operators. Um, so the, the times is an operator, and then this is an assignment operator, which helps us um, assign. So there are many built-in object types, which means things that come with all versions of Python, um, mostly to do with text and number um, are the ones that we're going to learn um, how to work with first. So each Python object has a type, and the type determines what Python allows you to do with an object. So for example, I can't add my name, Christine, to the number five. It doesn't really make sense. Four plus four makes sense, or maybe my name, my first name plus my last name makes sense, Christine Moran. Um, those two things make sense, but in Python, adding my name to the number five doesn't make sense. So that's why sometimes, not all the time, you need to know what type of an object you're dealing with. And conceptually, you always need to know what type. Um, so to use a real-world example, imagine we had an object that's a car and one that's a bicycle. They both can move, but only one can move at 80 miles an hour. Um, so if you're trying to move fast, you might want to know that you're in a car and not a bicycle. Um, we'll deal with coding complicated custom objects like cars and bicycles um, when we learn more about object-oriented programming. We can build virtual examples of them, and that's how, if you've ever played a computer game, uh, probably internally in the code, if you drive a car, um, they literally have an object called a car object. Um, but for now, we're going to deal with really simple stuff, um, things that are built into Python which help us do math, uh, reason logically and to work with text. And we've already seen some of these in our, in our um, exercises. So the first thing is a float is a real number. Um, it's a decimal number. So a float, the easy way to remember what a float is, is it always has a decimal point. So each of these floats have decimal points. And Nico might be horrified to see that pi only has two digits there. Um, <laughs> So a good point to know is that there's kind of a maximum number of decimal points that can be represented inside of a computer. And it varies depending on the language and the representation. Um, so you might um, say you want to 
have a really long number, pi or something like that, it can be more difficult to keep track of the digits all the way out here with a float object. We'll learn more about that later. For now, um, unless you're trying to represent an infinite number of digits, for all the math that we're working with, um, the float object will be enough to be able to represent this. Um, so there are, there's no concept of long or double in Python generically, but there are ways, which we'll learn later on, to represent longer numbers. Um, so uh, you can see a few different numbers here. Here's one shorthand. So this E character means 10 to the power of 15. So this is actually 1.6 times 10 to the 15. So if you need to write a really long number, instead of writing out that multiplication, you can use that E as a trick. We won't need to do that in any of our exercises, but you might see it some places. So if you see that E, that's a way to recognize. Um, so a float always has a decimal point. Um, an int is an integer, in other words, a whole number. Um, and it can be positive, negative, zero, etc. Um, int and float can do basically the same things in terms of adding, subtracting, dividing. Uh, we'll go over all the operations later. But sometimes you want to make sure the object you're working with is a whole number. Like, for example, if we're representing the number of students in the course, 12 and a half students wouldn't really make sense. Um, so if you want to make sure your code is physically representing something that's an integer, um, it's a good idea to go ahead and, and use an integer. Um, there are uh, bool objects, and a bool stands for something that's a Boolean. And a Boolean is a mathematical term, it's a longer term, um, and it, it basically means a truth. So it can be either true or false. And literally, you just type true or false in Python. Um, capitals are important here, so if you type true lowercase, Python will be like, I don't know what that is. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind when you're learning to program is that, you know, if you're talking to a friend and you say it's true, it doesn't really matter, you know, whether you emphasize the true or just sort of spell it T-R-U or T-R-U-E, you can just be like true. Um, if you're talking to a computer, a computer is very literal minded. Um, so you really have to get the, the syntax and the grammar right. Um, but sometimes you'll be almost close and if you miss a capital, just like if you're typing in a password and you miss a capital, um, it won't work. Um, so the capital is important here. And um, very often in Python, if you have an error, the first thing that you might want to do is make sure that you don't have a typo. Um, make sure that it's, the capitals are mixed right. Um, so you can use uh, bools to help you make decisions in your computer code, for example. If it's hot out, then eat inside instead of outside. Um, if I'm hungry, then get more food. Um, so you can make decisions based on, on these values, and you can save the output later. Um, so I can check whether it's hot out, um, and then not have to check my phone a lot again. I know it's hot out. So I could save that result and then use that for later. It's probably going to be hot for the rest of the day if it's hot out now. Um, there's also these objects in Python called none objects. Uh, and none is a special type in Python. It's always written none with a capital N. Um, and it's helpful in many situations that we're going to learn as we go, but you need to know it because you'll already see it some different places. One example where it's useful is a placeholder for an object that is sometimes but not always used later in the code. So then when the object should be ignored, it's set to none. So one example would be, say I have, um, an integer amount, one, two, three, four, five, zero, et cetera. Um, if I want to set that that should be ignored, I can't just set that to zero because zero is also an integer. So I have to set it to something special. Um, and that special thing is none, which you can later check and you can say, if this is none, then don't do anything with it. Else it's been set to a value. Yes, uh, in other languages it can be called null, um, but uh, in, in Python it's, it's actually a special object, where in some other languages it's what's called, a, it's a special type of pointer. Um, here it's an object. 
So now we also have string objects. Um, it's text within quotes. You can use either single quotes or double quotes. And one reason why you have both options is, well, single I find a little quicker to type, so that's nice. But also, um, that means you can put quotes within quotes without getting Python confused. So here it says, the student says, said, I'm so happy to be learning Python when she arrived at Caltech. We have single quotes within double quotes. Or the student said, I'm so happy to be learning Python when she arrived at Caltech. We have double quotes within single quotes. If we uh, tried to use double quotes here, too, Python would get to here, and it would be like, OK, that's the string. And then it'd get really confused coming here, because quotes should always come in pairs. Yeah, what's up? What happens if you want both single quotes and double quotes? Does the backslash work? So there are different ways of what is called escaping, um, which basically means I'm going to use a character that you would normally interpret as code, but I'm going to say don't interpret that as code. But there's also an option, which I'll show as follows, which I find is the easiest, which is you can use three quotes. <laughs> so with three quotes, um, you can also use three quotes, and you also have the option to extend it to multiple lines. Uh, and then you can use different types of quotations within that as well. Wow. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, um, I believe that we can just, let me, let, let me open up um, Python Anywhere here. Um, I'll just actually open up a Python terminal. I do, yes. Okay. So let's see. Um, we're going to do, hello, I want to do double quote. And I'm going to put a backslash here. And I'm going to do a backslash here. And then end it with here. And that works. Um, so basically, the backslash can help you if you want to use something that Python would usually think is code. Um, often, a way that you can use that is put a little backslash in front of it and then Python will no longer think it's code. But that's, that's a little more advanced usage. You don't need to know that right away. Um, it's more, if you're having problems, you could always try to put a backslash in front of it and see if that fixes your problem. Um, so that's one method of, of trying to debug. Um, so with three quotes, you also have the option to extend to multiple lines. So now you can basically write a poem. Hello, I have written a poem for you. I'm not a very good poet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll deal with all of these things in lab, which we um, might have, you might have done some of the exercises already. Um, so type is um, what's called a function, which we'll learn more about later. But for now, with these sort of things, you basically can type, um, literally type, the, the name and then some parentheses and then whatever it is you want to know the type of in between those two parentheses. Um, so... Uh, here's the question, and what do you guys think? Can you add my string and my int using the plus sign? True or false? I mean, maybe if you're a little bit crazy or want a really weird result. Who thinks that Python will let you do it? Yes? Who thinks that Python won't let you do it? Yeah, so let's let's try it. I mean, we can also do this in lab, but uh, let me see. So I'm going to maybe increase the size here. Um, so let's have a string. Uh, I'll make my name. And then we're going to have a number. I'm going to have five. And we're going to try to add the string plus the number. Um, so here we have one of these promised errors. And this, uh, the first thing to do with an error is literally like read it out loud to yourself. Because sometimes you just are like, oh, there's an error, that's terrible. But sometimes if you literally read it out loud, it'll tell you the problem. So here it's, we cannot concatenate or add a string and an int object. Um, so you can't do this in Python. Uh, how do you paste the object? 
That's a great question. So we'll learn about that in the next slide, but I'll show you already. If we want to turn the number into a string, we can add a string function around it. And then this will now, oops, sorry. Uh, let me exit out of here. I shouldn't have called my string string because that's uh, used in Python. So name. <laughs> and let's see. Name num equals five. OK. Um, so that's a good point. So here I tried, this is a function in Python. And Python let me name the same thing as the function. So I had called my name str. Um, and so there are some built-in functions and types where Python will be perfectly happy. Like, I can probably, let's see if Python lets me do this. I can probably, you know print? We've used print a lot. I can probably call print, make it to be Christine. Let's see if this works. OK, good. That, that at least doesn't work. But it let me name the function string um, to be something else. Um, so it's something to be careful sometimes um, when you name your variables. It's good to have a, a longer, more specialized name, because especially when you're starting out, you want to call things strings or ints or whatever. Those are often um, language words in Python. So if you go ahead and try to name your things those, then Python will get very confused. So I made that mistake as well. Um, so that's one reason why even if you're doing something really quickly, it's good to have a more descriptive name, like my name, or your name, or my friend's name, or Christine's name, or something like that. <laughs> so to answer your, your question, um, it's, uh, it's the, the string function in this case will turn um, a number into a string. And, and we can see here as well that um, we have this number here. Um, and we can turn the number into a string. Um, and we also have my name. But uh, there's a function that can turn a string into a number. But that's not going to work, because it doesn't know what to make of Christine. <laughs> if I instead do int 5, which is a string, um, it knows how to figure out that this could be a number, too. Um, there aren't longs. So long 5. Oh, there are, there are longs. Sorry. I'm wrong. OK, yeah, there is the concept of a long then. So um, I'm not introducing those in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a float, yeah, a float is a five. But yeah, there's also longs. We'll talk about longs a little later. Um, OK, so here you'll have all the information to attempt the second notebook problem, which I'll just give you a little overview here. Um, and this is, um, we're going to be working with uh, a latitude and a longitude and a date. And we're going to hand that all to this earth.image, and then it'll give us back an image, um, which will be the satellite image. And in this exercise, um, we're going to play around with different options in terms of strings, floats, ints, booleans, nuns, and try to see what happens when we hand them to the function. Um, and some of those will give you errors, some of them will work. Um, and so this will help you figure out when you're maybe using the wrong thing or what happens when you learn use the wrong thing. Um, so we already got to this a little bit. Um, so sometimes one object can be converted to another type. Um, so if we take input from a user on a computer, which we'll learn how to do this, it'll be like enter your name, enter your birth date, enter your favorite number or whatever. Um, whenever a user types on a computer, that's always a string in Python. Um, so if you take input from a user, if, they, if you say what's your favorite number and they type 53, it'll be 53. So to go ahead and use that, if we want to add 53 to someone else's favorite number, we would need to convert it to a string. Um, so if we know what one type can be converted to another, um, so I can't obviously convert Christine into a number, but I can convert 5 into a number. Then you can um, call any of the following int, float, stir, or string, and boolean. And then you just put in the parentheses whatever it is that you want to convert. 
Um, so what do you guys think happens when we do int 5.6? So we're going to try to convert a float to an integer. What number do you think that will re return? Any guesses? Nayeli? You think it's 5? What do you think? You would say 6? Or 5. Any other votes? 5 or 6? Let's see which one. So int 5.6. So it's 5. Um, so Python, let's see. Python are always basically rounds down with the end. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, there's another function called ceiling or floor, which will do rounding for you, which we'll learn about later. Um, but that can be a gotcha. If you expect int to round up, it's not going to round up. Um, but it will help you if you know that you want to convert a uh, float into an int. It will allow you to. Um, in previous versions of Python, if you divided a float, if you divided two integers, it wouldn't give you what you expected. Um, so say three-fourths should be 0.75, right? Um, it would give you zero. <laughs> so I'm using uh, a previous version of Python. In our latest version of Python, the one that we're working with, when you divide integers, it returns the right thing. So don't be scared of dividing integers. If you have some Python experience before, in Python 3.5, if you divide 3 by 4, it will give you 0.75. It will return a float. It will return a float, yeah, when you divide two integers. Um, yeah. Um, so then the third notebook problem, um, we're going to use the type function to look into types by, um, we've already defined these different uh, latitudes, um, representations of it, whether it's a float, an int, a string, a boolean, or none. And um, this is a built-in module to Python and allows us to use something called choice, which will pick a random one of these. So each time you run this code, um, it might have a different type here. And this sort of represents sometimes uh, the code that you're interfacing with, you don't have any control over it. Maybe you're working with a NASA module, a NASA library, and it spits something back at you, and you don't know what it is. So you might want to use type to check what it is, or to double check what it is. Yeah, this choice won't work by default. And we'll, um, there is a section on modules in the textbook, and we're going to go more into them later on. Um, we are using the NASA module or package already, um, which was something that we had to install. Um, this is something that comes with all different types of Python. But the reason why you have to do this is you saw before that I tried to name a variable str, but str is also a function. Um, so imagine every single possible function was already allowed to be used, um, it would mean that most names would be off limits. It's like when you go to uh, choose a new screen name now on Facebook. Most of the good names are already taken, right? <laughs> so the reason why you have to import the things that you want is so that you know which names are already taken and that it's very clear. If I were to import every single module that Python allowed me, then a lot of the names would already be taken, and it'd be really hard to keep track of what name was taken and what name wasn't. Since I had this line in my code, import choice, I know now that I shouldn't ever name anything choice in my program. Um, whereas in a regular program, because I'm not using this choice uh, function from that module, I could name it choice just as well. So that's sort of the idea behind that. We'll learn more about that uh, later on, though. Um, so now, uh, um, so this, here's an example of a, a comment. Um, so here we have a print 13 times 12. Um, and if you were to come back to this line in a few months, imagine the 13 was supposed to be something, the 12 was supposed to be something else. You wouldn't really know what the code was doing. Um, so. Python has words in the vocabulary. Um, for example, str is the string function. Print, we can't use. There's a variety of words that we're not allowed to use because Python is already using them. But you can also make up your own vocabulary in every program. So this can make your code easier to read and keep track of. And then you can also save intermediate results 
um, to perform complex computations. So if you do some hard work, instead of throwing away the hard work, you can kind of store it in a box. And uh, you know, just like if you store a bunch of things in boxes um, in your room and you don't label any of them, then it's hard to find your stuff. Um, so you can give the box a label. Um, so you can give objects a name, and that's called a variable. The label for your stuff is called a variable. You can assign that variable to a value with an equal sign. Um, so whatever is to the left of the variable of the equal sign is the variable, and whatever is on the right is the value. So we'll see an example of that here. And so instead of print 13 times 12, we could write the same code with variables. So we could say minimum wage per hour is equal to 12, hours worked is equal to 13, and then if you print hours worked times minimum wage per hour, you have an idea of what that code is doing. That would be your salary. Um, so you could also use almost the same code in another computation. And here we can see that we can assign hours worked to a different value. And then every time after that, hours worked is no longer 13, it's now 20. So um, unlike a truth in math where, you know, 2 equals 2 for the rest of your life, 2 plus 2 always equals 4, here with variables, they can equal whatever you want. And as soon as you put equals something, the value changes to that from that point forward. Um, so now if we print hours work times minimum wage per hour, um, it'll be 20 times 12 instead of 13 times 12. So you can name your variables um, whatever you want. Um, and here's an example of wanting to use it. So here's uh, a really long and complicated line where we're doing all these additions, etc. Um, and it's hard to see what's going on or say you have a problem and this code doesn't work. It's hard to debug. Um, so in this case, if you were to create a variable and um, have the output of the computation, you would be able to check its type, you would be able to see what it was, um, and it would be much more clear um, when you go to write this line what is actually happening. Um, so there'll be an assignment puzzle um, where uh, my date is uh, switched with a latitude and you'll want to use just one more variable and switch the two. Um, so this is a little puzzle that should be fun uh, to solve. Um, but basically it should not contain anything but my date, my lat, my temp, and the equal sign. Um, so uh, a little bit about coding style. You're technically free to name your variables whatever you like. Uh, sometimes Python will even let you rename things in Python. Um, so that's why it's a very good idea to use descriptive variables, uh, names that aren't too long, follow the same patterns throughout your code, and if you're working with other people's code, um, the same patterns as the existing code. Um, and this holds for not only variables, but for any code that you type. And um, although you're free to name your variables whatever you like, there's a couple small rules in Python, like Python won't let you start a variable with a number. Um, this is generally pretty quick to figure out because Python will immediately complain if you try to make an incorrect um, variable, if you try to name it the wrong thing. So one example could be, uh, let's say we have 27. We're going to name 27 more equals Nico to try to remember him and it'll say invalid syntax. We are allowed to start a variable with an underscore. You just can't start it with a number. So that'll work. Um, so there are a couple names like that. There are a couple rules like that. I'm not going to teach you all um, every single rule because that's just a lot to memorize, right? Um, and they're generally pretty simple, but if you find that variable isn't allowed, just try naming it something else um, to start out with. Um, so now operators are ways of combining Python objects to assign them to a value. Um, so everything on the right side of the equal sign is combined into a single value to be placed in the variable on the left side of the equal sign. Um, so you don't have to remember all of the operators. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview, but these are in the textbook. You can Google it online if you want to do something. Um, there are a variety of operators which will help you get um, uh, truth values. They all return um, booleans. So uh, we can 
check whether two things are equal, whether they aren't equal, whether they're less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal, or um, use things like the and or the or, which will work with two booleans. Um, so since two plus two uh, is equal to four, then for real is going to be true. Um, since math works, um, two plus two is not equal to five, so math works is going to be true. Um, so can I afford it? Uh, if your price is less, if the price of the object is less than your salary, then you can in principle afford it. Um, so if the price is actually less than the salary, then can I afford it will be true. If the price is more than your salary, then can I afford it will be false. Um, so these are all examples of setting variables to be booleans. Um, more often than not, we'll actually use what's on the right side here and not necessarily save it into a variable, but go ahead and use the result right away to make a decision based on that result. So for example, if you can afford it, already go ahead and buy it. So we'll often use these operators to help us make decisions in our code. What's up? Um, so those both um, have a little bit different meaning in Python. Um, so often it's good to, if you're working with booleans, to use the and and the or. Um, the ampersands and the pipes can sometimes do what's called a binary and or a binary or, uh, which basically means taking every bit and doing an or or an and of that bit. Um, so it often is that the double will work, but the single will do that. Um, and so it's better with Booleans to just use and and or, just to be very clear that you're working with Booleans. But double will work fine. Double, I, th I think double will work fine. Um, also the other thing is, I'm not sure if it does in Python, but you to make sure not to use equal in the comparison statement. So the, du the, the double does not actually work. Um, so true and false. This should be false because these aren't both true, but the double-double does not work. Um, so true and true will work because both these things are true. So uh, pipe would be an or, and so if, this, if the pipe worked, we can try to. Um, so that's also invalid. And then the single oh. does work. <laughs> So some of these things will work some cases, but I really recommend for Booleans using the and and the or because, for example, if, say, we try to do two and four, you'll get strange things. Oops, sorry. Play around with this. Sorry, my, my keyboard is in a different language. Um, so, like... Things will sometimes work, and uh, let's do two and seven. <laughs> so basically, it's doing like binary ands there. Um, so really, it's recommended. Um, you can play around with it and write a little table of what works and what doesn't, but with Booleans, just using and and or um, is best. Um, so with numerical operators, um, just trying to maybe debug why the screen is blinking a little. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Python now often gives you uh, incorrect syntax for that. So it will often help you not, be, not make mistakes, um, thankfully. Um, <laughs> so the following operators all combine multiple number objects and, you know, as you might guess, plus, minus, divide, times. Uh, one that we use sometimes is this time, the two times in a row is to the power of. Um, so two squared would be four, two to the power of two. Two cubed, two to the power of three would be eight. Um, so you might sometimes see that times, times, and that's to the power of. Um, order of operations, you might have learned this in your math class, um, Python. Some languages have different orders of operations. Python conveniently uses something that we've learned in our math class, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Um, and we'll do a couple exercises exploring what order things evaluate in. Um, but 
You see here, for example, exponents come before addition. So we're not going to add 2 plus 1 to get 3 and take 4 to the power of 3. Um, because exponents come before addition, we're first going to do 4 to the power of 2, 4 squared or 16. And then, um, because division comes before subtraction, we're going to do 16 divided by 16, which is going to give us 1. Then we're going to, finally we have uh, 10 here. So 10 minus 1 plus 1 is 10 divided by 10 is going to give us 1. Yep. Follow the order where it evaluates uh, both multiplication and division from left to right, or does it do it separately, which is how it's done in math? Um, so it is left to right. Yeah. Yeah, so say you have a uh, pi equals 3, then divide, uh, say something is divided, then multiplied, it will divide and multiply, not multiply first because. Um, yeah, no, it, it will do that, uh, but actually the results should be equivalent. So it doesn't really matter, but it does do left to right in that case, if you're dividing and then multiplying. Um, okay, uh, let me, yeah, I'm <laughs> going to try to do the, see if we can get it to maybe stop flickering. I tried in a different port, so we'll see if that's a little nicer. Um, so uh, this is one of the more advanced problems. Um, so if you guys are already you know, very familiar with Python, very familiar with math, um, this will be one of the things that will be exciting to do in the notebook problems. So we're going to start with a latitude of 1.5 and a longitude of 100.75. And you want to compute the longitude of an image 115 miles away um, at the same latitude, then the same thing, except we're going to fix the longitude. Then you want to compute the longitude and latitude of an image 115 miles away in both images. And then we're going to display all the images from the satellite. So we'll give you some hints in the notebook, um, but the computation will be a little bit more involved. <laughs> um, so, um, some hints, uh, we'll, you might mean pi, um, we talked about pi before, and cosine. Um, so we can try, uh, you can try from math, import pi and cosine, and then we can now use the values of pi and cosine. Um, pi is a value and cosine is a function. Um, so try it out before you try anything more complicated. Um, and I'm going to try one more thing to try to pick um, uh, to try to fix the, um, the screen here, I'm going to do, just try to get, I have another one of these dongles, and sometimes the dongle is actually the problem. Let's see, if that's helpful at all. Who knows, it may still flicker. If it still flickers, we'll deal with it. Um, uh, so each of the numerical operators have a corresponding shortcut to help the programmer assign the result of the operation to the same variable. Um, if you have previously defined a variable x, then x equals x plus 5. So you want to add 5 to the same variable and then assign the result can also be written as x plus equals 5. So either way is correct, and you'll see both in the Python code that you read. Sometimes, especially if you have a really long variable name, uh, writing that long variable name twice will make your code look a little confusing. Um, so that's why it's good um, often to have this shortcut. Um, so um, there's, a, there's a, an exercise where you can, you see the bank account balance, it's really long, um, so you can instead use this minus equal, times equal, divided equal, times times equal syntax to make that shorter. And so we'll do that exercise today. Um, control flow is the order in which computer code is executed. Um, Python is sometimes executed one line after the other. Um, but there are a variety of tools that allow a programmer to instruct Python to execute code only if a certain condition is met, say, 
uh, the price is less than your salary, um, or to execute the same piece of code over and over again until some condition is fulfilled. So I could say uh, com computers are kind of not that intelligent sometimes. I could say, while I don't reach the wall, put one foot in front of the other. So I'm doing that, 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 I'm in computer code, I'm in computer code, I'm in computer code. Okay, I reached the wall, so now I should stop. If I keep on putting one foot in the other, it's going to look really silly. Um, so that's one example of you can do a simple operation over and over again, but someday you want to stop, because otherwise the computer's just going to run forever. And we'll learn about uh, while and for loops um, later on, and you'll maybe have already tried some in your exercises. Um, so I'm going to mention one more thing, and then we're going to stop with the lecture for today and go over to the lab and get started there, um, and we'll have a break. Uh, but I'll, I'll give, um, after I put up the screen, we're going to stay seated here just so that I can give a couple more pieces of information about this school. Um, so the last thing that I'll mention um, is uh, conditionals. So these are kind of making decisions on what code to execute based on um, the results of certain booleans. So you can go out with your friends if you do your coursework. If you finish your coursework, go out with your friends, else you have to do housework. Um, and Python allows us to capture this method of reasoning with if statements, each followed by a block of code. A block of code is one or more lines of Python code to execute that is indented to indicate that the lines belong together and uh, to the statement above it. So, for example, we can see the same kind of logic in these bullet points. Um, so here's the black bullet points are all at the same level. Then the white bullet points all belong to the black bullet point above it. And in Python, that's captured by inventing one. And then this black square belongs to the bullet point above it. And that's like another level of indentation. In some programming languages, what code belongs to what other pieces of code or logic are indicated by parentheses or brackets or a variety of other things. In Python in particular, they're indicated by indentation. So you can either indent one or you can take four spaces um, or two spaces. You just have to do the same thing throughout your program. And Python will complain if you have incorrect indentation. And that is because the indentation or that white space is how Python figures out um, that these two pieces of code or bullet points belong to that one. They don't belong to the one above it, they don't belong to the one below it, but they all belong together. Um, so that's the, there's more about conditionals if we get that far um, today in both the textbook and um, in the notebook um, and in the exercises. Um, so we may learn more about that today, um, but that's all I'll say uh, for now on that subject.